Wow, now that's a headline. There's life on Mars. Haven't you heard of Ares Vita, the first Martian colony? 75 years after NASA's first launch of the Orion, the dream of Mars exploration became a reality in Ares Vita. This Martian community, population 100,000, is located on the outer edge of Alba Mons, a dormant volcano in the polar Tharsis district. Because of its location between Earth and the asteroid belt, Eris Vita is the optimal location for the Rapid Asteroid Security Protection System that can eliminate extraterrestrial threats to the populations of Earth and Mars. But the climate of Mars is not suitable for human habitation. Temperatures range from negative 225 degrees Fahrenheit to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The dusty, dry soil, limited gravity, lack of oxygen, and scarcity of water make survival a challenge. Engineers met those challenges. Aris Vita's infrastructure utilizes the geothermal energy supply available from Olympus Mons. To provide water for Aris Vita, civil and mechanical engineers developed the Aquacopia. This device collects and delivers permafrost from the polar caps and heats it using microwaves. Once the permafrost is heated, the water vapor is condensed, stored, and sent as needed throughout the colony. Oxygen is provided by the modular algae reproductive system, which utilizes algae to remove carbon dioxide and disperse oxygen into the air. Using the dual recycling of air and water system, these resources are 95% renewable. To make Mars habitable, however, a climate control structure was needed. Engineers initially considered building one large biodome, but with limited resources and construction equipment, it was more feasible to build smaller biodomes. Later, the biodomes were connected by enclosed tunnels called biopaths. These structures have an exoskeleton with large curved panels of smart glass, which monitor and control the temperature using suspended particle devices. These SPDs adjust the level of opaqueness by using microscopic particles that are either aligned or randomized in the response to a specific electrical voltage. Within the controlled climate in the network of biopaths and biodomes, food production occurs. Because traditional farming would not be feasible on Mars, aeroponics, the process of growing plants in the air without soil, while spraying the roots with water and nutrients, is the most efficient way of growing leafy greens, such as broccoflower, a hybrid of broccoli and cauliflower. Because an aeroponic system alone would not provide the city with its required nutrition, tilapia, a fish protein, is raised in an aquaculture system. Agricultural engineers combine these two systems, creating the Martian Aqua Aeroponic System, MAPS. MAPS is a closed loop system that fosters a symbiotic relationship between the fish and the plants. The tilapia produces ammonia-based waste. These nitrates feed the plants, thereby creating clean water for the tilapia. In return, the plants release oxygen into the biopaths. Designed by mechanical engineers, MAPS consists of a series of marine reservoirs. As the tilapia grows, the aquaculture environment of the reservoirs are adjusted for each stage of life, hatching, rearing, and harvesting. Suspended above the reservoirs are aeroponic plant sleds. Sensors on the bottom of these sleds indicate when the Bracco flower requires water. Supports lower the sleds into the marine reservoirs. Chemical and agricultural engineers oversee this calculated staggered growth to ensure that there is always fresh produce available. Today, a wide variety of plants can be grown within controlled climate biostructures. In fact, using the mineral-rich Martian volcanic soil 
combined with the organic fertilizer produced by the algae in the modular algae reproductive system, Aerospecians can enjoy fresh fruit in this orchard. Similarly, chickens have been added as an additional source of protein. Martian omelets are out of this world. MAPS biopaths not only create healthy nutrition, but also provide a relaxing setting. These biopaths are arranged in a wagon wheel around the Astro Towers, which house up to 25,000 residents. These multi-use structures also house government facilities, educational centers, and commercial zones. The Astro Towers and all structures in Eris Vita are encased in self-healing polycarbonate plastic, a type of plastic resistant to Martian dust storms and radiation. While the biopaths promote walking, if a distance is too far to walk to, you can take the leaf, a lightweight electric auto flyer that drives or hovers and is similar to the larger Aquacopia transport. The most popular destination is the entertainment biodome. Another popular pastime enjoyed by residents and tourists is Quidditch, a sport which uses hoverboards in the lower Martian gravity. The largest Quidditch field is located at McAuliffe University, the leading research facility for astrophysics. Because of the lesser gravity on Mars, Hawking Research Hospital leads the solar system in research in neuromuscular and ambulatory disorders. Two unique tortoise destinations include Olympus Mons, the tallest volcano in the solar system, and the Orion Heritage Site which preserves and exhibits the history of the first landing site on Mars. Tourists travel to these destinations on the Maven. That was amazing. Uh, so what does your future city have as an enticement to, off to offer future business investment? Um, one thing that definitely is good for business is our food production system, because since we're able to grow food on Mars, we can grow food anywhere, so it's sold to Earth to help end hunger. But for new businesses that want to grow, we also have spaces in surrounding biodomes. And since we're a new city, any business can come up and start their own. Um, how will you, you account for population growth in your food sources? Um, population growth, we, were, we are able to expand our city by connecting biopaths to other biodomes and also we expand up on our biodomes because you can see here that we first had just this top part but then we expanded up. Um, but for our food, if we expand and don't expect so much people, we have um, food that we flash freeze and kept in storage. And we also have food grown in additional areas, such as our orchard. So we know from research that one of the problems of going to Mars is that humans don't do well in closed environments for too long. We don't like to be in cans going in space for long distances. or on, We like to be outside. So could you detail how you come over these hurdles? Well, for people who come to Mars, they like to adventure and see what's up there. So we have created suits that aren't as bulky and big as astronaut suits out of polycarbonate plastic, which we also use for our buildings, and they can go outside with them. I really like your, oh, I like your um, algae system for creating oxygen, but what happens if it breaks down? What are you thinking about a fail safe for that? If it breaks down, we already have um, storage tanks with, different, with oxygen because up here it's obviously very important to have backup since we're by ourselves. We also have the oxygen created by our um, broccoli flower and our MAP system. So you would obviously have facilities to maintain what you have there. Would you also have uh, other uh, facilities to um, fabricate new components and new, new biodomes? Um, we have found, since it's very rich in minerals, we found a Silicon Valley that we can create our own polycarbonate plastic. 
how does your particular city uh, encourage a healthy lifestyle? Um, in all, since we all have biopaths, which connect our biodomes, we promote walking throughout our city. But because of the lesser gravity on Mars, um, it affects our bones. So we have a sim grav room in our hospital, which simulates gravity so that we can have healthy bones. So people are floating through as they, they're sort of walking and floating. Um, it's not floating, it's just like lesser gravity, so you're not like pulled down to the ground as much. So it's like a hopping, walking. Hopping, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you have the asteroid detecting system. So let's say, which is very spiffy, uh, <laughs> let's say it detects an asteroid, then what happens? Um, once it detects an asteroid, depending on where it is, it'll send out something to shoot it down. Or if it's pretty close, it'll just, since in space there's no mass, it'll just go and push it out of the way. And it not only protects Eris Vita from asteroids, it also protects Earth from asteroids. That's great. Um, has your city done anything to uh, account for <clears throat> periods where there might be uh, less sunlight due to Martian storms and the fact that it's further away from the sun? Um, the sunlight on Mars is 52% of Earth, so there's always sunlight available. But if something like that does happen, we have artificial sunlight on top of the map, on top of our food production system that will give the plants its sunlight. Why is Mars an economically viable place to go? Why, why would we go there you know, to start a colony? Um, one reason that we would go there is because it's a lot like Earth, um, other than the fact that it has lesser gravity, but it also has minerals in the soil that we could use to survive. Also, by inventing new things on Mars and showing that it is possible to grow food or do other activities, it will, we will be able to do things on Earth that we haven't done before because we never really researched about it. Nicely done.